So a few years ago, the scientists predicted this very intriguing event that was supposed to occur in October of 2022. An event involving a distant object suddenly becoming one of the brightest objects of its kind and creating a lot of emissions all at once. And here we're talking about emissions in a lot of different frequencies, anything from radio waves all the way to very powerful X-rays. And the reason they were pretty certain is going to do so is because this object has been doing so extremely regularly every 11 to 12 years since the scientists started observing the night skies, with even some of the earlier observations from roughly around 120 years ago showing us that this object was actually doing so even back then. Yet in October of 2022, even though it was expected, nothing here happened. And because nothing here happened, and something was expected to happen, relatively recently the scientists released this paper that as always you can find in the description below. So in this video I wanted to actually talk a little bit more about exactly what this object is, exactly what the scientists now think about it, and why they believe nothing was detected even though everyone expected it. And so essentially it's a bit of a mystery, but possibly not a very big mystery, because this particular paper does seem to resolve it. First, what exactly is this object, which is actually why I wanted to talk about it. This object is known as OJ287, one of the most well-known extremely bright objects in the night skies, occasionally becoming the brightest ever. This is a blazer. And I think one of the best ways I can explain very quickly what blazers are is by basically using the simulation from a space engine. So this is a central black hole, and specifically here this is the famous M87 black hole, whose picture was the first picture ever taken of a black hole, and this is a pretty good uh, illustration of what it might actually resemble. It has a really large torus around it, and two very very powerful astrophysical jets coming from both directions. Now the vast majority of these types of black holes around the universe are very often in sort of this formation, or this orientation toward us, and normally they don't really show us much. We'll usually see quite a lot of emissions coming in from the center, we'll also occasionally see the effects from the astrophysical jets, which very often also resemble these very beautiful radio jets visible from very very far away, but other than that we don't really see much. Mostly we just see quite a lot of dust, and usually a lot of emissions that don't really show us any specific detail. Once in a while, in certain galaxies, the orientation can be sort of this way, and this creates a relatively bright object. Now here we can actually start seeing the astrophysical jets coming almost directly toward us. The vast majority of the objects we call quasars are basically that. Very very distant, very powerful black holes that sort of point their jets almost directly at us and thus create very very bright objects. In most cases though we can still actually see the emissions and the effects from the accretion disk itself because that's basically what produces all of this brightness. It's very very rarely that the astrophysical jets are brighter than the accretion disk. But occasionally, in extremely rare cases, we sort of get the orientation that's kind of like this. Now that is an extremely bright object, and that's essentially a blazer. A blazer, in a nutshell, is a quasar with a perfect orientation toward us. And this creates a bit of a problem for astronomy. The problem being that, well, it's kind of hard to see anything in this galaxy, and it's impossible to actually tell anything apart. This covers everything. It even covers the extremely bright accretion disk that's usually visible from far away. Here only the jet itself is visible because it's basically shining directly at us. And these ones are the most famous known to us. Now because this particular jet is so ridiculously powerful and so ridiculously bright, very often it does create some of the brightest light in the entire night skies, at least in some frequencies. And even at a distance of 3.5 billion light years away from planet Earth, this supermassive black hole very often flashes with brightness of over trillions solar luminosities, much much greater than the entire Milky Way. But more importantly, over the years the scientists realized that it seems to actually increase in brightness very periodically. Because there are observations of this from back in 1887, the scientists were able to plot an average magnitude for this object, discovering that every 11 to 12 years it dramatically jumps in brightness. And because of this unusual increase in brightness and because of this periodicity, it implied possibly only one thing. Something seems to be orbiting around it every 12 years. But not just any something something really really massive that is able to produce quite a lot of disturbances and very likely suddenly increase the emissions by basically dislodging the accretion disk. And so pretty quickly the scientists proposed one of the possible explanations. 
it was another massive black hole. A black hole that was very likely on a somewhat elliptical orbit that was also precessing, which meant that it wasn't always perfectly 12 years in length. But more intriguingly, the actual masses involved here were absolutely ridiculous. The initial proposition assumed that the central black hole was about 18.3 billion solar masses, making this one of the larger black holes out there, as you can see it would be at least 9 times bigger than the orbit of Pluto, and even the smaller black hole orbiting around it being at least 150 million solar masses as well. That's about 30 times bigger than the one in the Milky Way. And that would create a very unusual system, an extreme system, that nobody ever thought would be possible. On top of this, the extreme size of this black hole would be also difficult to explain, and it also possessed an extreme spin, possibly spinning almost at its limit. So none of this made a lot of sense. But it was still an exciting system, because the scientists have always been trying to find these supermassive black hole binaries. Or basically black hole systems where two black holes are very massive and are on a collision course. And one of the reasons the scientists want to actually find these black holes is because of what's known as Parsec Problem. There's another video on the channel somewhere in the description that explains it in detail, but in a nutshell, the scientists today, or modern simulations today, suggest that technically two massive black holes should not be able to collide with one another even after one trillion years. Simply because the physical mechanism responsible for smaller black hole collision is actually absent in the larger black holes. And so the scientists have always been trying to find these binary systems that would help the scientists resolve this unusual paradox. So far it's still actually not resolved, but systems like this show us that black holes can definitely approach each other much closer and thus eventually collide. Although right now nobody knows how. But because of these earlier predictions and observations, and due to the assumed mass of 18.3 billion solar masses, the scientists were then able to work out the next possible emission that should occur around October of 2022 as the small black hole passes through the accretion disk. Well, at least that was the prediction. So far, nothing has been observed, and it's been a few months and the scientists have seen nothing. In other words, the prediction did not come true, and some of the scientists decided to figure out why not. They essentially decided to rework some of the initial assumptions and basically rework the model. In the process of discovering that it's quite likely that previous emission that happened sometime in 2016 was probably the one that was that was supposed to happen in 2022. But more interestingly, because of these earlier predictions, this also involved one of the longest and one of the most complex observations of an astronomical object ever conducted, referred to as MOMO, multi-wavelength observation and modeling of OG287, something that involved observations in 14 different frequencies, including X-rays, radio waves, UV light, gamma ray band and microwave band. And so altogether, this allowed the scientists to see exactly what's happening around this object, but actually most importantly, it finally allowed the scientists to sort of see through the jet itself. This super complex observation allowed them to kind of remove the jet from the picture at least for a little bit, uncovering the accretion disk and some of the other stuff in this galaxy that was previously invisible. And this was achieved simply because of the amount of observations and the amount of frequencies the scientists were using. At some point during their observations, the jet became dark enough, or basically faded just enough, for some of the other stuff to be visible as well, which in the process allowed them to directly calculate the overall mass and size of the accretion disk and thus work out the mass of the black hole. And turns out the disk here is not very bright, approximately 10 times fainter than originally believed, which by the way is still ridiculously bright, about 5 trillion times the luminosity of the sun. But this allowed the scientists to work out the mass of the black hole, which turned out to be much much smaller, maybe about 100 million solar masses. And actually just for fun I decided to try to create a miniature version of the system right here using Universe Sandbox. So here we have the central black hole that's about 100 million solar masses, and we have the smaller black hole orbiting around it with a somewhat eccentric orbit of about 0.65, and this happens approximately every 12 years. And so that's kind of what the scientists now believe is happening here, with the smaller black hole possibly being about a million solar masses or even smaller. And just to give you a visual comparison, the original assumption involved a black hole that was basically this big, so significantly bigger, way way more massive, and potentially a lot more difficult to explain 
than what was discovered very recently. And so by using a smaller black hole that's a lot more acceptable, it now became possible to explain all of the observations, including the absence of the predicted emissions in 2022 and the appearance of emissions much earlier in 2016. And though it still involves a black hole binary with two black holes that might collide in about 10,000 years from now, it does not involve impossibly massive black holes. So nothing in billions of solar masses. And at the same time, these observations showed us that these unusual outbursts seem to be non-thermal in nature. Or basically implying that it's not coming from the accretion disk, but it is coming from the super super bright jet after all. Which most likely has something to do with the generation of very powerful magnetic fields responsible for these jets and a black hole passing through the accretion disk, disturbing the magnetic lines, increasing the power of the jet, is the most likely explanation here. And so definitely a pretty intriguing study and a pretty intriguing discovery, but also a very intriguing observation that lasted for several years and involved pretty much one of the most complex multi-frequency collaborations ever. In the end, producing observations in a lot of different frequencies and generating huge amounts of data. But at least for now, that's pretty much all we know about this unusual system. We know that it's still some kind of a binary black hole, just much smaller black holes, and we know that these black holes are going to be colliding in the next possibly 10,000 years or so. They're still relatively far away from one another, with the closest point between black holes being over a thousand astronomical units, 50 times farther away than Pluto is from the Sun. But this is definitely not the last time we're going to be talking about OG287, because by themselves, blazers are some of the most mysterious and most fascinating objects and I'm sure we'll be discovering so much more about them in the next few years. And we'll actually discuss some of the other ones in some of the videos you can find in the description. And well, on that note, that's pretty much all we know about this unusual object, and that's all the scientists have learned. I guess OG287 sort of got downgraded from being a super exciting, very unusual and mysterious object to something a little bit more acceptable, but still a binary black hole system where the black holes are expected to collide. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.